Hi everyone and welcome along. Uh, we haven't painted a flower in a few sessions so let's do one. We've got a brand new one, uh, certainly brand new to me, I'd not seen it before. The Rose Bay Willow Herb. Really gorgeous, uh, a lovely tall plant sort of in that realm of foxglove, hollyhock style. Um, stocks, snapdragons, all that kind of thing. So grab your paints and let's get started. Oh, I'm excited to do a flower. Okay, so let's have a stem. And that's kind of all we need. Uh, let's get painting. So the flowers of the Rose Bay Willow Herb, it's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Um, a beautiful little, um, so four or five petaled, Flowers. I'm just trying to look at my reference image, I'm not entirely sure, but they they come out at lovely sort of single layered petals. Permanent rose is a good colour for this. Now, do you remember we painted flowers on an angle um, with the sunflowers the other day? Well, this is going to be so useful to have tried that tutorial to paint this because we're going to see flowers of all angles flying out the sides here. Because they grow, the petals and flowers grow sort of up and around the main stem. So I'm just using my size four brush and a, a fairly sort of diluted permanent rose and you can see the flowers are just starting to get maybe a little bit closer together. Not necessarily smaller, but just a bit more tightly packed in uh, until they're going to turn into more bud-like shapes. So I can just paint in little, just little dabs of the brush, really. until they start to really sort of close in on themselves and um, soak up to, soak up into the middle so the pink it starts to become less visible. But the nice thing with this flower is it, it just sort of follows quite a clear cone shape there. Whilst we wait for those to dry I'll get my larger size 8 brush out and we can place in some leaves. The leaves are nice and long and slender. The one thing though is they are quite, um, they've got quite a, a wobbly, wobbly edge. So for fun I'll take some green gold size 2 brush and whilst it's still, still a little bit wet I've just created a slightly more wobbly edge by just wiggling a wet brush across the edge there. So we're just going to paint in a few more leaves. You can either sort of start at the top and then taper the brush in. Or, depending on which way you prefer to go, you can start at the bottom and, and fan out a bit more to get the, the fatter end of the brush. I'm going to place in a few more that will come sort of close up into the flowers here, so maybe there might be one or two that just catch the edge of the flowers and in that case I'll just paint around the edge. It doesn't matter too much if that you get a little bleed like that because there's more colours to add in. We can now add in the stem so I'll get some Alizarin Crimson just mix it in with my green there. And I'll take a size zero brush and I will sort of start just below those top buds there. What I love to do is to paint in a stem and then paint a 
a parallel line just to give it a 3D appearance. Pencil line is very helpful for moments like this. So we don't actually see a huge amount of stem. And as we now start to fill in everything, we can use this colour to begin to connect these buds to the stem. The size zero brush does a absolutely fine job of connecting them up in a fine enough manner. It sort of droops a little bit like that, sort of curls out and we just want to connect to the back of each flower. Okay, so I'm now going to take some um, opera rose which is just a bit brighter and we're going to start to just zhuzh up some of these flowers. So in between each petal, we want to do a little stroke of colour, quite concentrated, coming out from the centre. Up at the top, just a little sort of accent of colour, a little low light just around the base will be nice. I just mixed a tiny bit of moon glow with permanent rose to add a little, a little shadowy low light to the petals you can see. I've just discovered they are definitely four petal flowers, so I do apologise, some of them have five petals. Um, and then up the top I just continued the little pink um, dots to just close up into the top of the stem. Okay, this is looking really nice. Um, I'm going to get my rigger brush, where is it, here we are. Long bristled brush to create some leaf lines. I've got deep sap green here. Let's just look at how well that travels up the, up the leaf or down the leaf. So smooth, really nice. If you haven't got one of these brushes in your kit already I highly recommend it. I'm not normally a big sort of kit person. I like to use sort of what I've got and not buy too much new stuff. But this is amazing and is a big game changer when it comes to detail. Leaf lines in particular used to be something I felt always ruined whatever it was I was painting and now not so much. Right, we are very close to having this finished. We just need to do some little filaments and stamens in the middle of each flower, so I'm going to mix up a bit more of that um, permanent rose moon glow purpley grey, as it will be a good contrast over the over the flowers. So we're going to fan out fine line filaments and stamens from the open flowers. The other good thing is the amount of water one of these 
Rigger brushes holds. I don't really have to go back into the palette very often. Stamen. And there you have a lovely little rose bay willow herb. <laughs> I'm just remembering what, what the name of it is. Um, there you go, a nice simple flower painting for this afternoon. Enjoy, uh, make sure you like, comment and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us become more visible to as many people as possible so we can share the joy of watercolour and if you want to get your hands on any of the brushes I used today just head to the episode notes below you'll find the link to my Etsy shop and website shop we ship internationally so you can get them wherever you are in the world see you again next time bye <laughs>